This is episode 16 with Joshua Rosenthal. The Melissa Welcome to the Melissa Ambrosini Show. I'm your host, Melissa, best-selling author of Mastering Your Mean Girl, and I'm here to remind you that love is sexy, healthy is liberating, and wealthy isn't a dirty word. Each week, I'll be getting up close and personal with thought leaders from around the globe to uncover the habits, mindsets, tools, and rituals that they have used to become world-class so that you can create epic change in your own life and become the best version of yourself possible. Are you ready, beautiful? Joshua is a pioneer and visionary in holistic health and wellness. He holds a Master's of Science and has over 30 years experience in health and wellness, including creation of the concept of a health coach. Long before the benefits of proper nutrition and lifestyle were mainstream, his fascination with personal growth and development led him to experiment with simple changes in his own diet and lifestyle. Through this process, he realized that food changes everything everything. He knew that if he could spread this message, he would make the world a healthier and happier place. With this mission in mind, Joshua founded the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, otherwise known as IIN, 25 years ago. IIN started with a small group of students in a rented kitchen in New York City and has grown into an online global phenomenon with over a hundred thousand students and graduates from over a hundred and twenty countries. That is amazing. Now, I personally graduated from IIN in 2011 and I loved it. For those of you who have read my book, you will know that in 2010, I hit rock bottom and ended up in hospital very unwell and very unhappy. I really lost and had no idea who I was or what I was going to do next with my life. I was just like this lost little kitten with no idea and no direction. What I did know, however, was that I needed to get healthy and happy again. So I signed up for IAN, not really knowing what to expect and have never looked back. Doing IAN was one of the best things I have ever ever done, both personally and professionally. It helped me launch my dream career and turn that into a profitable business that I can live off. It helped me heal and get healthy and achieve a level of happiness that I honestly didn't know existed. And I also met some of the most amazing soul sisters from all around the world who have become some of my best friends. And it also gave me a level of confidence to call in my dream man. Becoming an IIN health coach was really one of the best things I have ever done. And because I experienced such profound results, my brother, my sister-in-law, and so many of my friends have gone on to study at IIN too. It's seriously awesome. In this episode today, we talk with Joshua about why and how he created IIN back in 1992. We talk about what a health coach actually is, what the possibilities are for health coaches, how IIN is different to other health and wellness certifications, what the IIN curriculum covers and how much is involved in the six-month and 12-month program, bio-individuality, we talk about what that is and why it's important, primary foods, what they are and why they are so important for your health and happiness, why everyone needs a health coach, the future for health coaches and nutrition, plus so much more. Everything that Joshua and I mention, you will find in the show notes, and that is at melissaambrosini.com forward slash 16. I am so excited for you guys to hear today's episode with this beautiful, loving, kind, and generous person, Joshua Rosenthal. Joshua, welcome. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you, Melissa. My pleasure. Before we dive in, can you tell us what you had for breakfast this morning? 
This morning I had porridge. Nice, nice. Now, you haven't always been the founder of IIN. Tell us a little bit about your journey from getting a master's degree in science to creating IIN in 1992 and what you were doing before 1992. Sure. Well, I grew up in Toronto, Canada. And uh, even as a young boy, I just loved learning. And I, I did really well in school as long as I was interested. But then after about grade five, I started failing in school because I found it was kind of boring. And uh, so I would just read a lot and always trying to figure out what is life and why are we here? And there must be something beyond what we all are told in school. And so I accelerated eventually, got my act together, did well in school, and earned my master's degree in education, specializing in counseling when I was 20. And then I went out in the world and started just trying to help people, listening to them, understanding their problems, how could they be so full of problems. And eventually, even though I never learned any of this while getting my master's degree, I realized that food changes everything. The day a guy walked in to see me with a can of Coke in his hand, it was like a aha moment. And thinking to myself, whoa, it's so hard to help people when they, food changes everything. And when your blood sugar is going up and down, your mood swings go up and down. And that really was a flash that changed the whole rest of my life. And so at first, I opened a natural food store in Toronto, which was the first, I think was the first organic restaurant, actually, because our whole way of selling food was to explain where it came from and how it affects the environment. And that was probably 30 years ago. And really, the whole restaurant and the food store was just to bring people to education. Because if you feed a person for a day, you feed them for a day. And if you educate a person, you educate them for life. So I was always interested in helping people to grasp what's happening, and especially to have all their power and potential by putting good fuel in their body. Eventually, in Toronto, I became a bit of a rock star in my 20s, and I was on TV and radio and newspaper, and at some point, I decided, well, I'm going to move to New York, because if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. And I moved there pretty much broke. Uh, I, 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 uh, my wife and I divorced. I gave her everything. I got in my car, moved to New York, and slowly but surely, step by step, uh, built what's now Integrative Nutrition. But at the start, I was just teaching macrobiotic cooking classes in a basement of a, of a restaurant, and there was no internet, and people just started coming. If you build it, they will come, and that's pretty much what happened. So that today, we have 100,000 students and graduates in over 100 countries around the world. And honestly, this has been a humbling journey. And I really appreciate you and everyone who is a pioneer in sharing this message with the world. Mm, so can you tell us what exactly, according to you and the IIN beliefs, what is a health coach? Well, a health coach is an incredibly heart-centered person who lives with purpose every day. They are an inspiration to their family, friends, community, and of course, their clients. A health coach is a new type of wellness practitioner. And they are growing into the healthcare system because people are not well. And by the time they reach the doctor, it's a bit too late. They really need to learn before that diet and lifestyle, how to take care of themselves and how to create behavior changes and how to have support with that process. Because it's amazing. So many people are confused about how to be healthy when it's actually really pretty simple. 
So health coaches really distill that information into a simple way that people can understand to take away all the complications about what should I be eating, how should I be living. So it's a bit like in exercise, you might have a personal trainer. And so for the rest of your life, you can have a health coach. Now, just pretend I'm a new student, like, you know, as I mentioned in uh, the intro of this interview, I studied at IAN in 2010 and 2011. It went over and I absolutely loved it. But just pretend I'm a new student or I've just graduated from IAN. What lies ahead of me? Like what sort of possibilities are there for health coaches? That's a great question, Melissa. And, you know, the possibilities are actually endless. There are like literally hundreds of millions of people who just really don't know that eating what I call supermarket food is not doing themselves a favor, their children a favor. And so it's an opportunity for someone coming into the school to have a meaningful career and earn a great income at the same time. Central to what we do is we teach our students how to conduct a six-month coaching program and give them all the tools to succeed. However, many of our graduates then move on to other kinds of ways of working with people. So they can be uh, on the internet, running group programs. We have YouTube stars, Instagram stars on social media. We have graduates working in corporate offices, government offices, being authors, being on television. There's a There's a huge demand for this, and the only reason it's not so obvious is because it's not really covered in major media. Usually in major media, what we see is eating, you know, the big brands and going to see the doctor. So, But there is a groundswell of interest when people have insurance and the best insurance, and they go to the doctor and they're still not well, they're scratching their head, what do I do? Well, our graduates have the answer and serve people to help them live a long and healthy life. I think there's a lot of people that don't really know how truly well they can really feel. And for me, that's so sad because, you know, a lot of people are walking around unwell and unhappy and they just accept that as the norm. But all of the work that your amazing graduates are doing is reminding people that that doesn't have to be their reality. So, you know, that I just think that's so beautiful and one of the reasons why I love IIN so much and, and the work that it's putting out into the world. But how is IIN different to other health coaching or health certifications? When I started, there was no word called health coaching. So I have the benefit of 25 years of doing this and knowing the ins and outs. Our program is very deep. A lot of it came from my travels, going to India 10 times, trying to understand what is the connection between yoga and Ayurveda and meditation and Tantra, and really bringing all those elements together for transformation. And most of our students are women. Most of the clients of our students are women. So in essence, on a deeper level, it is a tool for transformation for women to be able, as a student and graduate, to earn more money per hour than most jobs that are possible, while at the same time being able to work from home, be there for the family, or just be in a safe, comfortable environment without being every day in the office and out there in the world. Within our program, there's two key words that I came up with. One is bioindividuality, which is that one person's food is another person's poison because so many people try different dietary theories and really can do harm for themselves. And we really go into understanding that living organisms know what to eat on their own. You know, giraffes know what to eat and kangaroos know what to eat. So on some level, human beings must know what to eat. And helping people get back into their basic instincts 
about what they should be eating helps people get back into their basic instincts about how they should be living, who they should be in relationship with, how they can have pleasure and joy in their life. So it's a, it's a deep process that uh, is functioning on many different levels. In addition to bioindividuality, there's also primary food. To understand that what we eat is important, but there's things in life that feed us on a deeper level. And that is personal relationship, fitness and exercise, a career that you love, and finding some form of spiritual practice, whether it's a traditional religion or yoga practice or meditation or nature, something that helps people realize that we are spiritual beings in a material world and we are all as one. So, being able to share all that with clients at such a deep level is transformational both for the client as well as for the practitioner because they will walk their talk and become a very different person through this career process as have you. In addition to all of that, we have 100 visiting teachers, the best teachers in the world. So rather than learning from someone who is relatively new at this or or learning from two people or three people, our students have a chance to learn from the 100 best people in the world to really understand direct from the source what's really going on. Because health, diet, and nutrition is an evolving area. So everything's always changing. And being up to date with current information is really important. In addition to all of that, we have a comprehensive business training. My goal always was not just to teach health, diet, and nutrition, but to be able to show people how to market themselves how to get on social media, how to send great email, how to bill people, how to charge people, and finding a target market. Who do they want to work with among the hundreds of millions of people who are out there? It could be young people, older people, married couples, this religion, that religion, this health ailment, that health ailment. So really helping an individual understand who's their target market. The whole business training element is central to getting people to turn the corner from being a consumer of information, lifelong learner, to being a provider, to be able to open their eyes and see, oh my God, the world is in trouble. Look at my neighbors. Look at what's happening. If you're not part of the solution, in a way, you're part of the problem. And so really going out there with the business skills to make a difference so that your most of your waking hours are not in just some random job, but in impacting so many people. And I always say, if I could do it, you can do it. Because the passion that builds when you start helping people is just unbelievable. It's incredibly rewarding, isn't it? It is. And one last thing I just want to add is our credentials. We are a licensed school, and we are affiliated with a lot of different universities. And in education, affiliation is everything, because it prevents anyone from taking shortcuts or from over-promising and under-delivering. In addition to all of that, we are the most active in creating political change. We have full-time staff in Washington, D.C. who lobby to help our government here, but therefore governments everywhere, recognize health coaching. And I'm very proud to say we're making tremendous progress. We passed a bill in the Senate just this year that unanimously approved health coaching should be part of the healthcare system. And if you know anything about American politics, nothing is passed unanimously because the two big parties are always fighting each other. But the fact that this got passed unanimously gives me tremendous hope and optimism because 
they all saw, well, we, this is what we need. So that's something I'm very happy about. Mm, that is amazing news. And what about in Australia? Is it the same here? Is it being recognized here? How is it unfolding here? Well, whether it's there or here, the, uh, you know, the world is being disrupted. There's technology disruption. There's young people are want to see a different world. In the healthcare system, there are strong and deep monopolies. The food monopoly, the doctor monopoly, the drug company monopoly. <laughs> but you can't stop the future from happening. Tomorrow's going to happen no matter what we do. And this is the future. So there is pushback. I, I you know, I see Australian media and you know, they are only existing because of their advertisers. So they are, they take a cynical look and don't talk about the many benefits that you and I and holistic people have experienced by eating well. So it, it's all going to, I think the United States leads in many areas, so influential in so many areas. So what I'm working on is making the change here and then having a ripple effect out to the rest of the world. Mm, beautiful. There are so many things that I love about IIN. And like I mentioned before, I graduated in 2011 and a couple of your concepts that really touch me are uh, the bio-individuality and the primary foods. And even when you were talking before, I was getting really emotional because I was just thinking about how far I have come since that girl who enrolled in 2010. And my entire life has changed since that moment. And I just love what you are doing and love your intention behind everything that you do. I love that you want to really make a dent in the universe. You really do want to help people and you can really feel that. And I just want to say how grateful I am to have been able to learn from you and, and have you in my life over the past couple of years because it's just been beautiful to connect with someone who's so passionate about making a difference and being part of that ripple effect. Thank you, Melissa. I remember talking with you back in the day. <laughs> and you, you're such a beautiful person and you have come such a long way. And the best is yet to come. There's a lot of future ahead. Exactly. So I obviously know the answer to this question, but for people who are listening and interested in this whole health coaching world, tell us what the 12 months at IAN looks like. Like, what does that actually look like? How much is involved? And is it all online? Is half of it in person? Can you give us like a little bit of information? Well, like, let's peel back the, the curtains and have a little look behind the program. Sure. Well, now we have a six-month program and a 12-month program. So for people who have time and they want to get to the finish line faster, they can do the whole program in six months. Does that mean it's just more hours during the week? Is that how it works? Because I did the 12 months. So how is, that, how is it different? Well, instead of doing one module a week, you do two modules a week. Right. And how many modules in total? There's 40 modules, so it's usually, so that would translate into 40 weeks, except we give people a week off here and a week off there to be able to catch up. And students expect to spend about five to eight hours a week on the content. Some people spend more, some people spend less. But the whole thing I did was to uh, have it be flexible. You know, even at the very beginning of the internet, I just really wanted to make the whole thing be portable so that women could, and men, but like I say, most of our students are women, and women and men are busy people. So putting it on so you can listen to it when you are traveling or when you're at the gym or when you are in the kitchen, you can be learning while you're doing the whole rest of your life. And within the program, there are uh, tests. And you have to pass those tests, and most people do. And 
We cover nutrition and business and coaching skills. Those are the three main components of the program. Mm, And that's what I love because I know there is a couple of other wellness certifications or health coaching certifications out there that don't necessarily cover the business or the marketing side of things, which is, you know, one of the reasons why I loved IIN so much because you gave us those tools. So I'm very grateful about that. And another thing that I really love about you and IIN is the curriculum covers such a broad range of health theories from paleo to veganism, to macrobiotic, to vegetarian. There's such a broad range. Have you in your own personal journey become hooked on one particular way um, and preached one particular way? Or have you kind of always had this more broad bio-individuality mindset? You know, Melissa, I, I got into the food not because I was a foodie. I got into, and not because I was an exercise person. I got into it because for years I was studying, well, why are people unhappy? What, what makes people tick? And after all that studying and all the psychology came to the realization that food changes everything. That, you know, if you have a cup of coffee, you feel one way, you have a alcohol, you feel one way, you eat steak, you feel one way, you have a fresh juice, you feel another way. And that's just one moment and one meal. And then if you add that up for a day, a week, a month, a year, a lifetime, or actually many lifetimes, because there's a genetic inheritance from what our parents and grandparents ate, you can formulate a different, completely different human being. And so how I landed into this was from a very deep philosophical place to, like, why is the world messed up? And what can one individual do to help turn that around and to really guide people to help their fellow human beings to a better direction to live their life? Because that's not what we see most of the time. And so I got into the food part, and at the beginning, I was enamored with being vegan. I, um, I got so skinny being vegan. I just looked at a picture today of myself, and um, I did that for about 10 years until eventually I felt like I just have to be more substantive in dealing with the development of the school. And it was challenging, so I started just eating some eggs and some chicken, and then eventually got to eating more animal food and realizing that you know my ancestors, this was food that was familiar for my body. With my parents coming from Eastern Europe, they, they, they cook, cook the hell out of everything, overnight cooking and things like that. And knock on wood, both my parents are in their 90s. They don't, they don't eat raw food. They don't eat healthy food. And they're still doing their thing. So I think it's really important to understand bioindividuality. You're not going to learn what to eat from a book, just like you're not going to learn who to be in a relationship with from a book. And even when you learn who to be in a relationship with, That may not be permanent. So, and when you find a diet way of eating, that may not be permanent. So being able to understand that life is in the moment and we need to stay awake and aware and present and help our fellow human being. And that food is important, but that primary food is really what feeds us in our heart and in our soul. And pulling all this together as an individual is pretty challenging. So having a personal trainer, and by that I mean a integrative nutrition health coach, to hold your hand and walk you through what could be a maze of pitfalls is a great investment and a great career. I love how you have such a holistic approach 
Because it isn't just about what you're putting in your mouth. Yes, that is super important, but it's just one piece of this puzzle. So that's one of the things that initially really drew me to IAN. I'm really glad that you put such a strong emphasis on this because I'm interested to know, you know, sometimes in our quest for health, one can become really fixated and attached to one particular dietary lifestyle. And I'm sure you've seen this. Um, and, and that person could close off to other ways. Have you seen a quest for health becoming an unhealthy quest for people at times? Oh, definitely. I mean, all the time. Life is from the inside out. And people too often have lost touch with themselves and are trying to mimic uh, people who are out there or trends and things like that. But I have seen way too much in the way of eating disorders and people trying to be, you know, a certain weight or be cool and eating the food that is the most trending at this time. But really, you know, some people are more naturally thin, and some people are more naturally heavy, bigger bones, smaller bone, different genetics. And it just takes time and guidance by a professional to help people avoid those pitfalls and find what's really true for them. And to be loving to themselves and accepting and non-judgmental of who they are and how they are, whether that's with food or relationship or career or every element in life. I agree. Now, you've been doing this, like you said, since 1992. Well, before that, but that's when IIN was birthed. This was before health was quote unquote cool. Did you know that it was going to be this big? Like, did you have a gut feeling that this was going to blow up into what you have created now? Or or was this something that you had no idea was going to unfold like this? Um... You know, I have a, I'll tell you something. I have a background. I used to teach something called contact improvisational dance, which is a form of dance which is in the moment without choreography. And so much of what I do is just to be present and in the moment. At the time, 25 years ago, I came across natural foods and I felt better than I had ever felt in my entire life. So I just wanted to share it with everyone. And my parents worked in the medical field. They were not doctors, but they worked with doctors. And I could see that there couldn't be any future in that because I met so many doctors and they would smoke cigarettes and talk about business and they didn't look healthy. So how could they be teaching other people how to be healthy? I'm so proud of our graduates who actually look healthy and they're like i'll have whatever she's having because it it, clearly it works but at the time no i i was just doing my thing it was kind of like being a musician i was just this is what i came here to do to write songs this is what i came here to do was to help people understand that food changes everything and wherever that leads i was 44 and broke i mean i I just loved what I was doing, and the rest of the world could do whatever it was doing. I thought, this is like an unbelievable discovery. There's there's huge hospitals and doctor's offices and drug companies, and here I was in my 20s in jeans and helping people to get healthy just by eating fruits and vegetables. Like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. Mm, well, thank goodness for you. Thank goodness. And for all the other incredible teachers that you bring on board, you have access to some of the most inspiring teachers like Deepak Chopra and Daniel Vitalis and Ariana Huffington and Dr. Mark Hyman. Now, has there been one particular person who has really influenced you the most? 
Well, I think my earliest teachers uh, really influenced me to understand the depth of life, the potential of life, and that food changes everything. I don't follow their dietary recommendations anymore. Um, but just that recognition that most people don't have, that food changes everything, really changed my life. And I'm so grateful that they, if you think I was a pioneer, they were really pioneers. And they would practice, you know, eating very little food or fasting or meditating. And they were way ahead of their time. My, my vision is that we can have a peaceful planet. And the way to get there is by eating foods that are filled with peace and grown organically and avoiding foods that are, you know, from big agriculture and filled with chemicals and, uh, you know, not grown or handled in a conscious way. Mm. Is there one thing that you could change in your journey with IIN? And and I know it's very easy and esoteric of us to kind of sit here and go, everything's perfect and I don't regret anything and I wouldn't change a thing. But if there is one thing that you could have done differently, what would that be? I think I would have, because it's grown into a big organization with global impact, the one thing I would have done is learned you know, more business skills. I, I think the curriculum is, is fantastic. The university affiliations, the political progress, involvement in medical field, and the acceptance is great. But, you know, I'm, I'm just a guy doing my thing who used to teach dance. And I, we have, I feel like, you know, my business plan, I, it's in, I wrote it down back in the day. My business plan was whether there's a God or there isn't a God and you just consider it the universe, whatever that is will surely want me to succeed. And that was my business plan. So I just went through and made so many mistakes, but always landed on my feet. So I guess it worked out. Mm, it's those opportunities where we fall that really um, we can take and get the lesson and the nugget of wisdom out of it and turn it into an opportunity for growth. That's how I look at it anyway. Definitely. What do you see you know, unfolding for holistic health coaches and for IIN in the next 10 years or so? What do you vision? Like what's going to unfold? What do you predict? Integrative nutrition health coaches are on the leading edge of being accepted as a profession. Yay! <laughs> I mean, at one point, anyone could practice being a doctor, and many people did. And then eventually, there was this thing called practicing medicine without a license. With nurses, it was the same. They would just, doctors would get people to help them. And eventually, there was a title called registered nurse. And you can't say you're a nurse if you are not a registered nurse. And so health coaching is so new. But one of the things that we work on in Washington, which will have a ripple effect around the world, is to have coverage by insurance, by Medicare, and to be recognized as a profession because we are a low-cost provider. It takes time to explain to people how to eat. Doctors don't have that time. Nurses don't have that training. And you can't learn it from a book. So I think the future is just like with doctors and nurses to have a profession and to have continuing education. Every doctor's office, if you think about it, needs a health coach. Absolutely. What's the doctor? The doc, I don't know exactly how it is in your country, but you have a few minutes and then yeah. you're gone. Yeah, like literally it feels like you just sit down and they've kicked they're kicking you out and you're like, "But hey, but hang on, I haven't even I haven't even told you everything I wanted to tell you." And it's not like a minor thing like, you know, should I wear pink or blue or heels <laughs> or it's your entire life or your children's life. It's like the biggest number one thing and they've got 5 minutes for you. So 
I view this as inevitable. And what do you see unfolding for nutrition? Like, what, what do you see over the next 10 years? How do you see people evolving with the way that they eat? Or do you feel like there's going to be one more stronger way that people go down? Or what do you think? I will tell you. One of my teachers told me this 35 years ago. He said two things that really stuck in my mind. One was, you will see the entire environment will collapse. And at that time, the environmental thing was nothing. and he was, he was, So that was pretty insightful. The other thing he said, which I, I thought the first thing was hard to believe, but then the second one was even more hard to believe. But because the first one was true, I often wonder about the second one. So the second one was that human beings will evolve from uh, homo sapien to homo spiritus. And so the people, you see it in second and third generation children whose parents ate healthy, whose grandparents ate healthy and were fit, that they have a very different kind of consciousness, a whole different set of values and a certain level of intuition and complex simplicity. And so I, I think and I see that that's what's happening. I see people who are uh, really evolving what it means to be a human being, their compassion, their understanding, their uh, intuition, their sensitivity, their flexibility. And uh, I think that's what we're going to experience. That's what we are experiencing and will continue to evolve in that direction. I'm curious to know, is there something that you're currently working on or would like to improve within yourself at the moment? That's a great question. I have the good fortune of having 100 people on the staff of the school, and I am working to empower them to take over. They have so much energy and vitality to be able to gracefully share this responsibility with them would be a dream come true. Mm. So let's pretend now that you have a magic wand and you could put one book in the school curriculum of every single high school around the world. What book would you choose besides the IIN book, which is amazing and I highly recommend everyone read? Um, what book would you put in the curriculum and why? I think uh, The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Mm. I think it, especially for children, it just opens their eyes and they see themselves in the book and it allows them to dream bigger, to have a vision. It's a beautiful book. I have a, an 11-year-old stepson and he is currently in grade six. But last year, so year five, they studied The Alchemist. That was one of their books. There you they, go. And when he came home and told me, like, my jaw hit the floor. Like, he doesn't go to a Montessori or a Steiner school. He doesn't go to one of those types of schools. He goes to a normal mainstream school. So for me, like, my jaw hit the floor and I was just overwhelmed with excitement that he got to read this book and study it. So um, that's, that's amazing that you said that. Beautiful. So I want to say I want to say one more thing. There is another book that I absolutely love. I just have to share it with you because it's not a well-known book, but it's called Hope for the Flowers. What's it about? It's just about these two worms. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, they think they're they think they're dying, but they're really turning into butterflies. Beautiful, beautiful. I'll pop it in the show notes and everyone can check it out. Is it a children's book or is it for adults? It's a children's book. It has pictures like a children's book, but it, you know, to really grasp what they're saying, it, you need the adult mind to, to comprehend it. Great. I'm going to check it out. I might even get it for my little boy. He'll probably love that. Great. So let's talk about your day. 
like I said, I am absolutely fascinated with how people prime themselves for the day, their morning routines, their daily rituals. I love just hearing like the little things that people do to really help and support themselves show up into the world as the best version of themselves. So do you have a morning routine or do you have a couple of daily non-negotiables that you perform each day? I have one fantastic daily routine. What is it? What is it? It's being in a relationship with my girlfriend. Beautiful. And what do you mean by that? Do you mean like fully showing up, being present? What do you mean? Well, we just have such a such a deep and intimate personal relationship and we spend all day every day together. And we're just getting close to 10 years together and you know, we just tell each other we love each other all day. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, I've never experienced anything like this. And, you know, it gives me everything I need. It feeds my heart and soul and feeds the school and the curriculum and the students. And that by far is my daily ritual. Do you have any relationship advice or, you know, tips for people being in a relationship for 10 years is a beautiful achievement and by the sounds of it it's a very loving and conscious relationship so can you give us some tips um you know i was just talking to my best friend a guy today for an hour and get a big fight 24 hour with his girlfriend and um you know, there's no, there's no easy. I think human beings are evolving, and it used to be maybe with your parents or grandparents that there was one gender, and you were either male or female, and the man was very manly, and the female was very feminine, and one person took care of the kitchen and the children and the food and the shopping, and the other brought home the bacon and earned the money. And so there was a need for each gender to have the opposing gender to create balance. Plus, you couldn't really, divorce wasn't a thing because of social embarrassment, because of financial problems, because of legal issues. Whereas, fast forward to today, you know, women have a feminine side and a masculine side. Men have a masculine side and a feminine side. So there's less need and urgency to find the opposite and to create balance. And so then the question is, how do couples stand side by side with each other, both embodying the masculine and the feminine, and feeling like it's better to be with someone than to be alone, and then finding the love and the patience and the beauty and the aspiration and to be able to merge as one and I am you, you are me, we are one. One of the things we do, I'll tell you a big secret. One of the things we do is we're not married. And <clears throat> I noticed, because I've health coached so many people, is that when people are, you know, when they get the ring and they're engaged, that time period, people, it's the highest, happiest time of their life. Marriage, not always true. <laughs> you know, people are married five years, 10 years, 20 years. Some people, especially our graduates, are still have joy and wonderment. But a lot of times it becomes, um, you know, about the children or about they, they forget their original feeling with each other. So, anyway, long story short, we decided that we're going to get engaged and stay engaged. So we are now engaged with each other for the rest of our life, which is a very active and prolific word that describes our relationship and keeps it as a living, breathing, in-the-moment experience. That's really beautiful. And I do love that word, engaged. It's, it's present. It's alive. It's here. And it is a really beautiful word. 
I'd love to hear three things that you're most recently grateful for. And I bet I can think of one of them. The first one you're probably going to (laughs) say. Yeah. Well, I love Alex. I, uh, I'm really grateful, um, for my health. I think, you know, I didn't come into, uh, life being healthy and having gone to India 10 times, uh, you know, took a lot out of me and, um, building the school took a lot out of me. So I'm grateful every day for being healthy and in awe of my body. My heart never misses a beat. My stomach digests whatever I give it. And just to be alive and present is something I'm deeply grateful for every day. And one last thing is, you know, it's a bit by coincidence that I got into this career. and. It has changed my life, and it has changed 100,000 students and graduates. But each one of those people, if I stop and think about it, has influenced 10 people, 20 people, 100 people, some of them far more. So I'm very grateful that the doors opened for me into this career and that I could make such an impact on improving the quality of life. For so many people. Mm, Beautiful. So I would love to hear now, what is one of the most important things that you could do for your health? Well, that's what I'm doing. I I really stopped using my computer. I do my work off my phone and I'm home all day, every day and just, you know, pace myself and eat well, and pass on the responsibility to the next generation. Beautiful. I think it's really important to, yeah, take some time away from our devices, definitely. What is one of the most important things that we could do for wealth, so our career and, you know, what we do in the world? Well, I think you're describing it well, because wealth isn't necessarily money. No. And one of the things in India was that, you know, I would see I would see children without shoes and begging for food, and yet they were happier and more alive and vital than children back home who had everything. And so I think it's it is really important to for each of us to understand ourselves. Who am I? What am I about? And there's so much choice in the world today. And for that reason, I recommend people to close their eyes. I'll do it with you right now. I just close my eyes. You close your eyes. You take a deep breath. And we, we get transported to a different place, which is our consciousness. And it's in that space where all the answers lie. And by doing that, a little exercise for even five seconds or 10 seconds helps us to pace ourselves, our heart, our feelings, and to move away from feeling like life is like being on a treadmill. Mm, I agree. Do you have some sort of regular meditation practice or something like that where you transport yourself to that space? Well, yeah, just that. I mean, be, I hate to say this over and over, but being in India, you know, was changed my life. And one of the teachers said, you know, like, meditation is from the past, when people had nothing to do. There was no TV, so they could sit around for an hour or two meditating. There was nothing to do. And in today's world, this teacher said, Your goal isn't to be meditating for long periods of time, but five seconds, one minute, two minutes. But the real goal isn't meditation. The real goal is to be meditative. And what does that mean? It means to have, to be present and aware, like as I'm speaking in the formation of each word, or the pacing and speed of my voice. So basically to be present and 
when there's a capability to do that, we are really like being meditative or meditating all day, every day. So one of the things I love about health coaching is that I would just watch my breath as my clients were speaking. And, you know, breath in, breath out. They were speaking. I was breathing. And they were unwinding their built-up tensions inside themselves. And very often, by my just being fully present with them, they had great answers to the problems they were trying to solve. Super powerful. Letting them, you know, discover the answers within themselves. It's so powerful, isn't it? It is. I mean, I just want to say, you know, the whole medical mindset, the way I the way I see it is very different. I think that we are in a biocomputer. So if the lights go out, our eyes, within a second, open wider so we can take in more light. If our temperature goes up, we start sweating. You know, the woman can give birth from a little teeny egg to a complete human being. Uh, the other day, uh, my partner fell down the stairs. And, but within uh, the half a second from when she felt like she was falling to when she fell, her body biocomputer reorganized her body so she would not hurt herself. And so if you keep all of that in mind, and then you can understand my concept that the body will heal itself by itself. So when the body is sick, you have to wonder, well, why does this biocomputer that can give birth to a baby or see in the dark or prevent a fall, is there a problem in the programming that it's now getting sick? Probably not, because it's more sophisticated than the most sophisticated computer in the world. So then as a health coach, I began to unravel, well, why is it? And it's because the owner of the body is not using it properly in either too much stress, improper diet, improper lifestyle. And by simply rebalancing that, the body and the client will heal themselves by themselves. I don't have to know all the answers. I just have to guide people to eating healthier food, stop doing harm to themselves, and then the same body that knows how to sweat in the heat or give birth to a baby will know how to get back to homeostasis, back to balance. Isn't the body amazing? Given half the chance, it can heal. It is just incredible. And I've seen some of the most amazing things unfold for people given the right environment. Yeah, it really is amazing. So I have one more question. I would love to know what is one of the most important things that you can do for love? I think to love ourselves and to love our partners and to have patience with them and to recognize that when we're in a relationship, we chose this person out of millions of people on the planet. And to recognize what are the learning experiences that are available in this process. I love that. We choose those people, don't we? You know, sometimes we can forget that, you know, the, forget that we've chosen that person. And it's very easy to use our partner as a punching bag, so to speak. But at the end of the day, we have chosen to be in union with that person. And we have to show up with love and patience, like you said. So thank you for that reminder. And, and we have to also know when, when to fold. Mm, absolutely. It really helps to be in community because when we're up that close with an individual, you can't really see what's happening. So having people to talk to, having whether it's friends or family or a health coach, to be able to give an outside perspective is really important. Mm. And I think 
everyone. We're really lacking that community and lacking that support. I know a lot of women I speak to feel like they have to do this thing called life on their own. But if you go back to when we were hunter gatherers, we were very much in tribes and communities. And for me, having a coach or a spiritual mentor or a teacher, just someone else to bounce ideas off and to just listen, like you said, is so supportive for our own growth and evolution, which is why I think having a health coach is one of the best things that you can do for yourself and for your own growth and for your own health and your own happiness. Definitely. Just having having that person always by your side, guiding you like a flashlight and being trained in this, get you out of the darkness and say, go in this direction. I'm sure it's safe. I'm sure it's good. I've been there before. Can make all the difference. Mm. Well, I just wanted to acknowledge you before we wrap up and just say thank you so much for the work that you do in the world and for all the love and support and good vibes that you put out. You know, you're such a loving, generous, over delivering human being. And I'm just very grateful that you decided to trust your intuition and move to New York and start this you know, start teaching because it's changing so many people's lives. And I'm so grateful that I got to be a part of that, you know, and and study with you and IIN. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. You're welcome, Melissa. While you were saying that and I was taking it in, I was also thinking, you know, it, it, it takes one to know one. And as I watch you grow and evolve and mature, I know that the vast amount of territory you've covered these past few years, and it's like a pleasure to watch you for the next few years in the path that you take and finding ways to be influencing and sharing your ideas with the rest of the world. It's really great that you're doing what you're doing. Thank you. Mm, Thank you so much. And I'm very grateful and can't wait to chat to you again soon. Thank you. I really enjoyed that conversation. He is such a soft and gentle human being. And I'm so grateful to have stumbled across IAN and Joshua many years ago. It really was the catalyst for me changing my life and my direction. And it kind of put me on my path many, many years ago. So I'm very grateful. I love that he is not fixated on just what you put in your mouth. I mean, it is so much more than that. Health isn't just about what goes in your mouth. Yes, it's important, but it's just one piece of this holistic puzzle. And I love how IIN has such a strong emphasis on primary foods. It's one of my favorite things about the course and about Joshua. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode as much as I enjoyed chatting to Joshua. If you really liked it, please subscribe and leave me a five-star review because that means we can get more epic and inspiring people on the show. And don't forget to tell me on Twitter who you would like me to interview. And you can do that by tagging me at Mel underscore Ambrosini and the person you want me to interview using the hashtag The Melissa Ambrosini Show. And for everything that we've mentioned today in the episode, you can check it out in the show notes. And that is at MelissaAmbrosini.com forward slash 16. And you can also listen to all my other podcasts there. And that is at Melissa ambrosini.com forward slash podcast. So make sure you go and have a listen to all of the other ones and leave me comments. I read every single comment under the show notes. I love your comments. So please leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of this episode. And finally, I just wanted to say thank you so much for being here, for wanting to be the best version of yourself and for showing up for you. You seriously inspire me so much 
much. And if there's someone out there that you know could really benefit from this episode, please share it with them right now. You will make their day. And until next time, don't forget that love is sexy, healthy is liberating, and wealthy isn't a dirty word.